All right, today we're gonna to be going over a simple yet very important part about maintaining your 4x4. We're gonna be doing a step-by-step -step oil change on a Toyota 4.0 V6, and let's get to it. All right, so this is the four liter V6. Uh, it's commonly found in 2005 to 2015 Tacomas, 02 to 09 Forerunners, 06 to 2014 FJ Cruisers, some first and second gen Tundras, 2005 to 2014, some of the newer Tundras and also the new new Toyota 4Runner, but they have a cartridge style filter and not the traditional screw on, so I'm not gonna count that as part of this. To reset the oil change reminder lamp on your second gen Tacoma, you're gonna go ahead and cycle through with your odometer button until you get to your actual odometer mileage. You're gonna go ahead and cut the key off, hold down your odometer button, turn the key on, you're gonna get those dash marks countdown, and also your maintenance light will be on, and it'll count down to zero, and then back to odometer, and that's how you know that your maintenance required light has now been reset. We're gonna be using the Mighty M3614 oil filter. It's what we use on all of our customer's cars here at the shop, and I use it on my truck as well. This is a oil supplement from BG called MOA. Feel free to Google. I might post a link or something in the description, give a little more information on this. I always use this in all my vehicles. And as far as our oil goes, we're gonna be using STP uh, Full Synthetic Dexos uh, 5W30. Our oil filter is located on the driver front side of the engine and it unscrews counterclockwise like most threads. There's a little nipple down below the tray there that catches, uh, that directs all the oil that comes out of the filter. One trick is if you take a Mobile One bottle like this or, or any sort of bottle, uh, even a soda bottle, and you get it down here, and you get it to where the spout will direct all the oil into that. You can go ahead and loosen up your filter, and it's gonna spill down this spillway and through the spout and right into your bottle, and it's not gonna make a mess all over your engine. With our old filter removed, uh, we're gonna go ahead and go to our, our new filter. You just want just a small dab of oil and run it around the seal here and this is gonna be the surface that makes contact with your oil filter, uh, the plate that it screws onto, and it just helps lubricate it so it's not completely dry when you're uh, tightening it up. You're gonna to wanna to ensure that this surface is clean with no debris. Go ahead and take your new oil filter, start threading it on clockwise. You go until it touches, and then you're gonna go three quarters to a full turn do it too tight you're gonna have trouble getting it off and you're gonna need a strap wrench of some sort or a oil filter socket to be able to get it off the next go around at this point you want to clean out your little trough there that caught your oil I just have some brake clean on hand go ahead and clean that out and then once it's clean don't forget to remove your bottle like I'm sure maybe the dealer has done to you guys a few times he's always seen it online and from here we can get under the truck and we'll remove the drain plug. Alright, going under the truck to remove the drain plug. I have some aftermarket skids, which they thankfully gave me a little hole to access my drain plug. If you don't have aftermarket skids and you have a factory skid, uh, they also leave you a little hole. If you have a TRD off-road, if you have a TRD Sport, there won't be anything in the way in an SR5. Uh, same with that. So, we're going to go ahead and remove our drain plug here. It is a 14 millimeter. Something important to note, your drain plug itself will have a drain plug seal. This is my old one. Uh, your plug seal may be stuck to your oil pan as this one was, or it may be on your actual drain plug itself, or it may be in your drain pan that you use to catch your oil, wherever it is, uh, or if you choose to use a new one, you need to have one there. It's gonna keep you from leaking oil out. Um, I'm going ahead and replacing mine, and we're gonna go ahead and get this installed back in the uh, oil pan. One thing we don't want to do is we don't want to strip our drain plug. Uh, the spec on it is 30 foot pounds, so we're going to go ahead and put it in there. If you do not have a torque wrench, uh, don't be alarmed. Just 
do it a, just a little snug, just until it touches, and then kind of just like the oil filter, just just enough where you're not afraid it's going to come loose, but also to where you're not going to pull the threads out of the pan. Back top side on the truck. Go ahead and remove our oil cap. Put in our funnel. First, I'm going to pour my BG MOA in, so that way all the other oil can wash it down. Next, we're going to add our oil. The capacity is about five and a half quarts. We're going to go ahead and add about five before we start it up. Go ahead and take our funnel out. Put our oil cap back on. Our dipstick is over here on the passenger side front of the engine. We remove the dipstick, wipe it off, go ahead and put it back in, and we can check our level. Might have to get it on the bench for you and then we could, uh, I'll show you where it should be and what dots it should be in between where it'll focus. Got the dipstick on the bench here. At the bottom you have a dot and at the top you have a dot. Um, this is full and this is low. Uh, typically most manufacturers will say that is a quart low. So you're going to want to fill it up until your oil level is right at full or very close. You don't want to overfill. Um, so you just go ahead and top it up and keep on checking the dipstick. You do not have to start it up every time you top it up. Uh, just the beginning so you can fill up the oil filter. Just to give you guys a better idea here, I pulled the dipstick and it's really hard to see but the oil level it's about halfway in between the dots, which would indicate that it's about a half a quart low, so it shouldn't need much more than a half a quart to be brought to the full mark. Hard to see here, but it is right at the full mark, and that's exactly where you want it. All right, guys, that about sums it up. Don't forget to record your mileage. Uh, if you're doing a full synthetic like I did, go ahead and do 5,000 miles. If you're non-synthetic, go ahead and do 3,000 miles. Uh, go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. I will be doing maintenance videos like this all the time and I really hope these videos help you guys out and get some positive feedback and it kind of gives me the motivation to keep on making these for you guys so you guys can learn to do a little DIY mechanics at home with the proper guidance. Uh, just be sure to follow all the steps and you should be good.